did you know um the last time Meryl Streep did um method I think I know the answer to this where she was full method in her process mm-hmm. I think it was Prada mm-hmm. it was wasn't it yeah, the um, Emily yeah. Blunt, the, the actors on actors. There was I haven't seen the full episode, but I've seen clips. Uh, it was her and Anne Hathaway, Emily Blunt and Anne Hathaway, uh, on actors on actors. Um, and she said that uh, that was the last time Meryl ever did Method because she said she had such a miserable time because on uh, her side she was like in character, I bet. but on the other side everybody else was having a party, and she was like, I was so and miserable. she was miserable. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a. I mean. For some folks, it's the only way they can process, and you're not going to argue with Daniel Day Lewis, are you? No. But for me, I, I, I wasn't it. Uh, Sh- uh, Sh- um, I want to say Sife, but it's, me too. Uh, it's not Shia. Shia. Shia is the one who gave that method great description. Adjacent. Method adjacent, where there's aspects of method I absolutely embrace, but the totality of method acting, I, I think, think, is it would all absolutely insane on the role. Um, if the, it just depends on the role it and does. how immersed how you have like, to be. If I'm playing a because I did, I did uh, some pictures with a photographer this past week, and I did a picture that looks uh, – I, I had glasses on, and I looked a hell of a lot like um, Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, and I said so I was – if I played Jeffrey Dahmer, I think I might have to no, – obviously not like <laughs> you're not going to go out and kill people. No, but and, there's a headspace you'd live in. You have to be in a certain headspace or yeah. you're not going to give the performance that you need. Yeah. And I think the guy that actually played him on Netflix said it and it messed him up because he – It, it did. Like, I it have did. to be in that headspace. It did. To uh, portray this. And a long intro, but speaking of Meryl, I've heard her say this herself. A lot of people in this generation only know her from Devil Wears Prada or from Mamma Mia. (laughs) Or Mamma Mia. Please, she has a lot of films, but if you've not seen Sophie's Choice, that was the film where everybody went, holy crap, what is this creature? Kramer versus Kramer. Yeah, you had to bring up Kramer versus Kramer. Uh, But... That's why it's so funny when, like, people, when Kangana said her thing. That's why everybody lost it. Because if you haven't, if you don't know and you're like, oh, the Devil Wears Prada girl. Yeah, Kangana's better because she is, Kangana's a great actress. Just watch, just watch Sophie's just Choice. go back. No one should compare themselves to Meryl Streep ever. ever. Just don't do it. I don't know how we got Or on Daniel it. Day-Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> Long intro, but suck it. Nawazuddin and Zadiki, I was yeah. laughing at his face. you are not Meryl Streep. Stop saying it. Josh. Hey, welcome back to our stupid rights of Corbin. I'm Meryl Streep. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to sports on Patreon. Follow the official Twitter account. Subscribe and hit the like button. Button. Today we got another uh, best ever food review show. Great, um, and I, I, I think this is his other one. So it's yeah, just the one voiceover. where they compile and yeah, do the, he narrates five extreme Indian junk foods. Yes, bring it on the real Delhi Belly. That's what I'm saying. We've had real Delhi Belly. It's when we had South Indian food in New Delhi. That's true. I had Delhi Belly, but mine was Kolkata gut. My my stomach got screwed up my first trip. I made the mistake. I had the that water, and my poops weren't the same for a long time. <laughs> TMI. Well. Be careful what you wish for when you drink water. I was about to make a really terrible joke. <laughs> why, why, why did you not? What's what's holding you back today? It's pretty perverse. It's about your, what's holding you back today? It's about you and your wife. What's holding you back today? He said, Cole cut a gun. I said, is that what do you call when you have sex with Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> we that- call... That's why I didn't say it. Ah, uh, here we go. This episode, we're immersing ourselves in the irresponsible world of Delhi's most addictive street foods, filled with mouth-watering delights that will keep you endlessly crazy. Silver and gold. We've had some dishes like that. As the capital it's just for looks. India and the former Mughal Empire, Delhi is one of the most diverse and vibrant cities in the world. It's 28 million inhabitants, all from different backgrounds, create a perfect melting pot of cultures from where the most alluring delicacies were born. From the city's cherished beef delicacy infused with more than enough spices to overwhelm your dopamine system <laughs> to an extravagant gold-covered sweet dessert that will skyrocket your IQ. As family business, we have been using 24 karat gold. Buckle up as we explore the top five most addictive street foods in Delhi. 
we kick off our day with one of Northern India's all-time favorite snacks, alu chaat. This masterpiece combines crispy <laughs> potatoes with bold spices to create an electrifying experience oh. amidst the chaotic streets of Delhi. You had me at potatoes. One intriguing tale of this dish's origin takes us back centuries, when during a cholera outbreak, people spiced their food up to the brim to help fight off infections. Creating alu chaat is a fiery process. First, let's transform the tawa into an oil jacuzzi. Splash in potatoes and fry them until golden brown and perfectly crispy. Now, here comes the spices. Add chaat masala, a red chili powder mixture, salt, a generous dose of chutney, and lots of lemon juice for a delightfully tangy note. Now, simply mix well and serve. Alu Chat is a flavor roller coaster, kicking off with a zesty explosion that gradually transforms into a fiery, mouth tingling sensation. It's an exciting adventure where crispy potatoes take a plunge into mm. a mosh pit of spices. That the result delicious. is total satisfaction. 72 cents. Next, we're uncovering the enchanted history of a dish that transcends time and borders. It's called Nihari. This revered delicacy traces back to Old Delhi during the time of the illustrious Mughal Empire in the 16th century, when these delicious meat stews were cooked for up to eight hours uh. overnight and served to laborers of government construction projects. <laughs> Wasn't he at the last place? That regular customer? Was he? <laughs> He's following him around. Word, Nahar, which means early morning. While this was traditionally an energy packed breakfast, it's a great meal for any time of the day. Start by washing beef chunks and cutting them down to size. In this big traditional pot called a handi, combine the beef, tomatoes, ginger garlic paste, and a person's lifetime intake of ghee or <laughs> butter. Heat up the pot and mix well. Halfway through the process, it's time to enhance the Nihari's flavor, intensity, and texture. Add red chili powder, curd, brown onion, a mixture of chickpea flour, wheat flour, and water. Then let this rich concoction of ingredients stew for seven hours. As a complimentary carbohydrate, serve with a traditional chapati, baked fresh in this tandoor. Oh, I bet that's glorious. I love that chapati. Beef Nihari oh. is a butter-filled delight. Slow cooked in ghee and infused Good with fiery Lord. spices. Good lord! I just your palate spewed in my pants. <laughs> this is a journey of flavors that sets your senses ablaze. 48 cents for an orgasm. If you're an alcohol That's drink, a lot for your mom. Like myself, <laughs> it's for you. Because our next dish strikes the perfect balance between indulgence and healthiness. <laughs> this iconic establishment is renowned years. for its kaleji, a delectable, spice-filled liver stew with lots of flavors <laughs> and medicinal he was just benefits. Like, if it gets in, it gets in. The origin of this dish traces back to Punjab in the 16th century. The word kaleji translates to liver. And nowadays, throughout India, it's prepared in all kinds of ways. Here's how this place creates their timeless version. In a vessel, mix up mutton liver, chili powder, and turmeric powder. Then layer in sliced onions, coriander, salt, water, and tanks of cholesterol juice. By <laughs> juice. Now, give the flavors about 20 minutes oh. to mingle. If it's done right, liver's tasty. Alongside hot and fresh chapati. Oh, bread! Chicken livers. I had some in Calcutta that Indrani took me to a place that did this this chicken liver dish that was delicious. Leggy is a spicy revelation. Saute generously in oil. It oh. delivers a savory dish with a slightly gamey taste, reminiscent of venison. Here we have a culinary gem that showcases the. I don't consider venison gamey. I can consider your mother gamey. It, I guess it depends on the kind of deer. But even get ready because I've eaten a couple kinds of deer. Pot. I don't consider them gamey. Indian street food features a beetle leaf wrapped around an array of toppings, including nuts, chutneys, nope. sauces, and even fire. I don't want it. Are you okay? However, this particular place goes a step further with their signature creation: the gold Ferrero. Lotus I felt Island, I've not had good pan yet. It felt weird. I have. It felt, it felt weird. Eating gold felt. I said, okay, let me make a very special pan. And as wasteful. a family business, we have been using 24 carat. When gold. I did it, it's good for your heart and it makes your brain sharper. 
to create this incredibly sweet treat. We should try to make pawn. I don't think you'll ever like pawn. If it has rose, rose in it, I won't. That's why. But there's different kinds. Masala powder and silver for the outer coating. Here come the heavy flavors from nine varieties of chutney, lychee, pineapple, sandalwood, ratrani, saffron, strawberry, rose, candy oh, fruit. There it is. <laughs> time for the Big Daddy Ferrero Rocher. It's a Rocher? <laughs> ingredients like a cake. They put a Rocher on there. You might like that. No. Powder, glucan, silver it might powder, hide the rose a bit. That's yep. not going to hide the rose. Nothing can hide rose. It's not going to hide the rose. Chaos, don't stop there. Nothing hides Here comes rose. The seven silver squad ready to sparkle. <laughs> silver dates, silver candied sugar, silver candied fruit. I've never gotten the candy, silver gold. Me too. I don't get it. Like cool. And silver it just makes it more expensive, and it has no flavor. I can think of better things to do with silver and gold. Gold cardamom for that regal flair. Hold the leaf and slap on twenty-four carrot. That was a whole piece of cardamom going in there, bro. Now skewer a cherry, dried mango, dried strawberry, and one more Ferrero Rocher <laughs> on a stick, and let them join the pun party. Don't Good lord. Decorations. Wow. Never seen a pond like that. That is insane. Watch, it's gonna be like three dollars. The gold Ferrero Rocher pond is the guilty pleasure you've been secretly yearning for. With every bite, it unleashes You don't like Ferrero Rochers? I think they're delicious. Perfectly harmonious flavor. I, I think they're yummy. Roller coaster with chutneys, chocolate, cardamom, saffron, and infused <laughs> That was cute. With delight. Oh, wow. Yeah. 14 bucks. At our epic final stop, we're getting a taste That's of expensive. take on hash browns. <laughs> These golden pucks of flavor are violent. Yeah, that's my nickname for your mom sometimes. Golden puck. So the golden puff of flavor. One bite for you to be hooked for life. <laughs> this dish was created after a Portuguese trader brought potatoes to India during the 17th century and used it to... I love all these original photos they have from back in the day when they used to do Polaroids of the people when they arrived in India. The recipe yeah. begins with tiki, made from potato and corn flour, deep fried in scorching oil. Here, they have a unique way of deep frying that makes American fried food look healthy. After a few <laughs> minutes, the tiki is removed from the oil and smashed to increase the surface area. And then, then put back in. To the fat bath, <laughs> absorbing more fat bath. Oil, more oil. It transforms into the perfect golden brown color. Now crush the tiki in a bowl. Add jolet, an oily North Indian chickpea oh. gravy, then tamarind chutney, coriander chutney, and top it off with fresh onion and grated vanilla. And then go to the bathroom after you're done. Four cents. <laughs> that would be fifteen dollars here. Invites you to a delightful sensory adventure. I bet that's seventy cents. Meets the velvety chole in a perfect union of spicy. Oh. It's a delectable dance of textures and flavors that capture the essence of Delhi's culinary spirit. Dollar twenty. That looks delicious. Among these five extraordinary dishes, which one made you give up on your diet? Was it the tangy aloo chat, making hearts race and taste buds tingle, or the fiery beefy hari? So it was the beefy hari that gave me oh, the um, that shot. You were yeah. By the savory delight of but they all look great. To perfection in an ungodly spice combination, or perhaps the extravagant gold Ferrero Rocher pun, a delightful fusion of That's interesting. with over-the-top luxury ingredients. I, uh... Lastly, the aloo tiki chat with its savory, spicy, and crunchy twist. Each of these dishes reflect Delhi's audacious street food spirit, pushing the boundaries of flavor and indulgence. For more thrilling culinary adventures, be sure to subscribe to Best Ever Food India. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Introducing Best Ever Coffee. <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, the pan looks... Uh... Would I try it? Yes. Would I probably like it? No. Yeah, there's some things that since we started the channel that I initially tasted and didn't like that I have grown to like. Pan is one of them. Hajmol is one of them. Um, those are the two right off the top of my head that when I tasted them, they were disgusting. And I, <laughs> and I now, I actually like them. I remember the first time we ever had pan because uh, it's one of the stores. It was really... It was during a snack Wreck. It had been soaking for a while. Yeah, people, I think it'd be, it would be sitting out on the counter. I was like, oh, what's this? And they said, pun. I said, oh, it's just throw one in there. Uh, yeah. But uh, then we had one in um, India, and I didn't like it as well. I liked that. If it has rose, I promise you I won't like it. 
It's like if it has the flavor cherry, like an artificial cherry flavor. I hate that flavor. I despise yeah, it. Yeah, like maraschino cherries. Or if there's a fishy. Uh, there's, I'm not a big cherry fa- flavor fan. That is one of my least favorite flavors on the planet. Fishy fish. So if, it, if I don't if, mind that at if all. Anything is fishy. I I will vomit. Yeah, I don't. Uh, that, that, then, that, I, um, like, like for example, oysters for me is like I've kissed the ocean on the mouth. No. It's so and then uh, <gasps> rose. Those are probably my three least favorite flavors of all time. I'm not a big fan of rose, but I've grown accustomed to it in pond so much that I actually like it now. Feels like I just. It's so perfumey. Yeah, it feels like it's I, so perfumey. I gave. Um, I f- it feels like I gave oral to your grandma. Or you just sucked on her scarf after a long workout. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just gross. There was one time though, I, I found this, the most expensive pawn ever. And it, it was like, it was a box and it had a whole bunch of different stuff in it. I think it was like a hundred bucks US, right? Damn. So it was like a really, really expensive. And I wanted right. to order it. Right. Just, just to see. Just to for a video. I think I thought it'd be fun, but they didn't ship. They wouldn't ship. I just, a... I hold on. I've been sitting here all morning long and I've just noticed something. What? Where's your necklace? Oh, it fell off this morning. I have never seen this man in my life ever without the necklace. Neither have you. We've been filming all morning, and it just hit me. No, yeah, the um, it, the, the 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 band the band broke, yeah. and so I needed. But I've I've literally never seen you without it. It's probably except maybe you still wear it at the beach. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen Corbin without that thing. Do you sleep with it? Ooh. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I just noticed that. I it's for a, um, I, it used to be a tied-on one, like a... With... And I'm talking... How long have you worn that? Well, I stole it from Steph um, and her... Because they're, they're, the key is from her grandpa. So it's been... You've worn that... Since I've... Since you've known Stephanie. Dating. Her. Yeah, you've been dating Stephanie. Yeah. So it's... Amazing. Sorry. I just... Time. I just... Just occurred to me. The only time I usually take it off is uh, on set. Yeah, obviously. that's kind of a no-brainer. Because... Well, unless obviously it's covered up and I can right. keep it on, but like obviously yeah. if they, <laughs> I take my wedding rings off. Exactly, <laughs> cover up your tattoos, yeah, the whole yeah, nine yards. Right. Yeah, it's kind of what you do. But uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, I would try all of them, all of them, even though I probably wouldn't like most of them, either for spice reasons or for rose flavored reasons. Yes, but for those of you who were either there or have seen, if you haven't, you can go back and watch them. Yeah, Corbin was quite adventurous and courageous on our trip. Uh, and sustained a lot of the heat that I didn't think he'd be able to handle. It did very, very, very commendable job on that trip. That's all we got. I don't know why you're still here. You just like hanging out and being around us. Cool. What's the live videos we can react to down below. <laughs>